Praise be Jesus and Mary. In today's gospel taken from the eighth chapter of the gospel of St. Mark, our Lord explains to us the spiritual life in one terse sentence. In verse 34, he says, Jesus called the multitudes, called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, quote, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Again, that's Mark 8, verse 34. Some spiritual authors have said that all three stages of spiritual growth in the spiritual life are contained in that one phrase of our Lord. He says, whoever wishes to come after me must, one, deny himself. That would correspond to the purgative stage, the beginning, the beginning stage of the spiritual life, when we turn away from sin and we turn towards God. Two, then they need to take up their cross. That refers to the second stage of the spiritual life known as the illuminative stage or the proficient stage. It's where we actually begin to imitate the virtues and the life of our Lord. And then he says, uh, they must, quote, follow me, says the Lord. Uh, would that corresponds to the third stage of the spiritual life, the unitive stage, the stage where our choices and actions and words are guided primarily by the Holy Spirit, where we truly follow in the footsteps or in the footprints of Christ. Actually, one of the main themes of St. Mark's Gospel is what we call the theme of the way. It starts right in the beginning of the Gospel, where St. Mark quotes from two prophets. One, the prophet Malachi. He says, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare your way. That's Mark 1, verse 2. And then right after that is the quote from Isaiah where it says, prepare the way of the Lord, Mark 1, 3. When you read the gospel of Mark, you see that Jesus is on his way. Uh, he's on his way to Jerusalem. He's on his way to Calvary. That is the way of the Lord traced out in the gospel. And what does he do? He invites us to join him. It's a way of suffering, of course, which everyone in life will have to go through suffering uh, one way or another. But it's also a way, it's actually the only way that leads also to glory, which not everyone will experience and not everyone will participate in. In the actual Greek text of Mark 8, 34, Jesus says, if anyone desires or wants or wishes to come behind me, that's how he begins the, uh, the invitation. Uh, he begins it by saying that it's directed towards us. It's an invitation. If you want to do this, then he's going to tell you what to do. St. John Chrysostom commenting on this passage says, quote, he who does violence to his hearer often stands in his way. So he's an obstacle. But he who leaves him free draws him, means draws the hearer nearer to himself. Jesus does exactly that. He invites, but he leaves us free at the same time. Jesus doesn't force anyone to follow him. You know, we can't force someone to love us, and neither can God either. Love is a choice. You know, with our wills, we choose whom or what we'll love. The desire itself to follow Jesus, the desire to love God, if that's something that's in our hearts, even ever so faintly, uh, be sure that that desire has been planted there by God himself. But the Lord leaves us free. He leaves us free to embrace that desire and cultivate it or free to refuse and reject it as well. And notice that our Lord says, if anyone desires to come behind me or after me, Translation, if you choose to follow Christ, then it's he who leads us. We, we don't lead him. What happened to Peter just before today's gospel reading? You know, today's gospel opens with Mark 8, verse 34. Two verses earlier, which was yesterday's gospel for the Mass, Peter had just openly rebuked our Lord when Jesus said that he would suffer many things and be rejected and killed by the religious leaders in Mark 8, 32, it says that Peter took Jesus and began to rebuke him. Uh, the Greek word there for rebuke means also to censure him. So what is St. Peter doing? He's essentially pulling God uh, aside and censuring God, rebuking God. Not the wisest choice uh, to make. Uh, Jesus responded in kind. He responded by rebuking, by censoring Peter, saying, what did he say? He said, get behind me, Satan. 
Get behind me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Mark 8, 33. Get behind me, Jesus said to Peter. Peter, what did he do? He steps in front of Jesus, meaning that he tries to chart a different path for our Lord and a different path for himself as well. I notice that that happened when Jesus opened his mouth and began to speak specifically about what he would have to suffer. Peter didn't want to hear it. He wanted to chart a different path. That's when Jesus calls everyone together and he says to them, basically, if you desire to be my disciples, you must follow me. You must come after me. You must get behind me. Remember, there's nothing, that, of course, that Jesus doesn't uh, tell us to do that he didn't do first. Uh, he does what he tells us to do. He did it first. He leads the way. We only have to follow him. We know that Jesus does go out and he searches for those who are lost. Yes, but that doesn't mean that he runs after them. It doesn't mean he runs after us as if we were in charge of ourselves and of our lives and he's just trying to keep up with us. No, that's not how the spiritual life actually works. Uh, it's actually very beautiful how after the resurrection, John's gospel, Jesus points this same thing out to the Apostle Peter. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but after St. Peter repairs the damage for what he did during the Passion when he denied our Lord three times, at the end of John's Gospel, he tells our Lord three times uh, that he loves him. Then Jesus said to him, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were a child, you fastened your own belt and went wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go, Jesus said to him, John 21, verse 18. In the next verse, St. John says that, quote, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And he continues after this, he, Jesus, said to him, what did he say to Peter after that? Follow me, follow me, he said, John 21, 19. Once again, you know, get behind me, Peter. Basically, our Lord's saying, I know the road better than you do. Trust me, trust me. When Peter was young, both in age and also even spiritually as well, he used to do whatever he pleased. Uh, when he grew older, when later on in life he was more mature in the faith, he allowed the Lord to lead him. And that's what made him the rock. That's what made him such a great saint. So today let's ask Our Lady for the virtue of docility, that we may allow her and allow the Lord to lead us in his way, especially when we can see the darkness of suffering in front of us on the horizon or even when we're also already in the midst of it. If we deny ourselves, if we carry our cross and remain faithful to the way of our Lord and to faithful to his commandments, then Jesus and Mary promise that they will carry us to glory and to paradise. Praise be Jesus and Mary.